here? Okay. Well, thank you for coming tonight, and I'd like to call this meeting to order for the special freeholder budget workshop meeting of February 18th, 2020 at 5 p.m. By the roll call, please. Freeholder Fantasia. Here. Freeholder Fasano. Here. Freeholder Hertzberg. Here. Freeholder Director Patillo. Here. Freeholder Yardley. Here. Would you please stand with us for a moment of silence? And please join with us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice as defined by Section 3D of Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail, such notice being submitted on February 6, 2020, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street, New Jersey, to the following. New Jersey Herald, New Jersey Sunday Herald, Star Ledger, WSUS Radio, and WNNJ Radio and is also posted on the bulletin board maintained in the Administrative Center for Public Announcements and has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We have no executive session, no proclamations, no public hearings. Uh, so we're going to start with public session from the floor. Comments are limited to three minutes or less and must only address issues regarding agenda items. Please state your name and print your name and municipality on the sign-in sheet. Uh, this public session would be for agenda items only. Uh, can I have a motion to open to the public, please? So moved. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we're open. Pardon. spend another 11 hours and still not have all those questions answered. Uh, it is Im probably impossible to understand how every penny of a $94 million budget is spent. I'm going to suggest a different approach to the budget process. Let's change the approach from what can we spend to this is all we can spend. Sort of like each one of us does personally. We know what we have to spend and stay within those limits or bear the consequences. I don't believe I've ever heard any officeholder say the tax rate will stay flat and I will not vote for a budget that increases the tax rate. I hope you notice I said tax rate, not tax dollars. The tax rate can remain flat but the county can be receiving additional income. The economy is booming, the rateables within the county will be increasing. If the economy is stagnant, rateables will be growing at a slower rate. The current tax rate uh, per hundred of value is 55.6 uh, cents, which is a 62% increase over 10 years. But if you look at the dollar, the amount of dollars that we spent, that has even increased greater than that. Why? Because rateables have increased. I can already hear a major objection to this approach. The cost of health care and wages continue to rise. Other expenses continue to rise. 
That should not be a surprise. One minute. We, we need to get away from a one-year mentality when it comes to budgets. If the increase in rateables does not cover the increase in expenses, then the tough decisions need to be made. The process, I am suggesting, will not be difficult. It will be painful because those decisions more than likely will involve people. Here's the second suggestion. Times are changing. But for whatever reason, change in the way we run government will lose a race to a turtle. Advances in technology demand change in how government operates. And I think this group on the board can be the catalyst. This board offering a centralized dispatch unit has saved my municipal money. So don't so why can't we look at offering other consolidated services? Technology makes a service like tax collection. Time. Go ahead, please. Yes. Okay. If you don't mind. I, I just have like to hear the rest of this. Uh, technology makes a service like tax collection be done at the county-wide level. A quick study could determine the feasibility of moving forward. How about construction service? I know in the larger municipalities, they have somebody there every day, but in most municipalities, there's not a construction official and on a daily basis, of course, a more inspector. I think contractors would embrace knowing during normal working hours, they can count on being able to get a permit, not have to worry about how long before an inspector from the state can come and do the inspection. I know the devil is in the details and support from our state legislators will be necessary. The cost of studying these changes I think will be minimal and I think the results of such a study will be idle. I encourage everyone in elected positions uh, Think first about what is best for the citizens they represent, not what uh, will increase uh, the likelihood of reelection. And these objectives are not mutually exclusive. They can be done together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna reply to you. They're all good suggestions, and I mm -hmm. thank you for taking the time to write them and then coming here to deliver your message. Um, as far as the, uh, the 911 service that we offer, we haven't closed, none of the PSAPs have closed in the county to join Sussex County's PSAP. Yes, no, I know. Have. So that's a municipal, if it, the service is offered. No. It's up to the municipalities to want to give up that home room I, to I, come I, here. I, I, the other one, you may know this, remember this too, I believe when Eskelson was here, they offered, they wanted us to, to have a central tax assessor up here as well. But the municipalities, again, um, do you remember that? Maybe you were buying that, well, that they were trying to offer that? There, there's a pilot program that's been implemented in two counties in the state to allow for central, centralized they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't come forward. Yes. So I, I agree with you that you have to look at things on a county level. Yes. But until the municipalities want to give up that home rule, there's no way to force that issue. Yeah, and I agree 100%. Uh, that's why I think a study needs to be done. Which would show, I'm sure, cost savings. I would think that in the, the county alone, tax collection costs probably approaching a million dollars. I'm just based on what it costs in Lafayette, I'm, I'm uh, projecting that over the whole county. That's a lot of dollars spent on technology done in a central location. And if you can show that, uh, that might. And of course, uh, our state legislators have to be in on it too because it might uh, require some changes in, in state uh, state regulations yeah, and yeah, rules. Yeah. I think everything you suggested are good. Yeah. We'll think about them, look them over. And again, thank you for taking the time to go through all those things. Appreciate not as, it. Not as grouchy this time. No, no it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else, Mr. Gell? Yep. <coughs> You'll get her wanted. 
First of all, I'd like to ask you to reevaluate your three minutes. Uh, you can't get any information done in three minutes. Well, there's, there's no one here, so we can, we can wait. We've been having, as you know, with some issues that are pretty lively here, so three minutes seem to work, but we can always waive that. So please go ahead. First, I read a letter to the editor in the paper saying about uh, you should spend more time on the taxes and the uh, Second Amendment. I don't think many people, maybe I'd say Golden School Water, have to think more about the taxes than me. But the Second Amendment is extremely important to us. So don't drop that for this. <laughs> but worry about this one too. Uh, some of you should remember in 2018 or three uh, rhinos, Warhol, Worse, and Space, support or sponsored a billion dollar school bond disaster, which Murphy then cut in half to 500,000. That provides the first time the state tax is going to be collected on our property tax bills. Have we heard whether the state's going to impose it this year or not? The date that they're supposed to notify the counties is the 1st of March. And I think you should be taking into consideration whether we're getting bombed with this or not. It could be for the next 30, 35 years that we could get hit with this tax on our property tax bills. First time for a state tax on the property tax bills. Second item, hot off the press, which I assume you people already know, uh, not many people in the audience. Uh, Sussex County last year, total assessment was 16396 16 billion three hundred ninety-six million. This year is down to $16,246,000, a reduction of $150 million in the assessed value of the county. As the last gentleman just said, that's going to affect the tax rate. <coughs> Bourbon Township went down 180 million. We're going to see tremendous shifts in the taxes this year. I hope you take that into consideration. Josh, last year, you two years ago or so when you ran for election, you promised to reduce taxes. Last year you sat up there and you said, reminded people of your promise, and you said you didn't get time maybe next year. Well, now it's next year. I we mean, need those reductions. Hold on. I never said that. What I said is to address the financial problems of the county, which if you, and, and I know you do your homework, you've seen, it's the, it's the ridiculous amount of debt that's on our books. And anyone, like the other gentleman was saying, anyone that, that looks at this finance like you do your home finance, you can't do anything until you pay that debt down because that just keeps increasing. It's like that clock winding up in the background. That's what we're dealing with. So although to, to, if you're looking at the long-term plan to reduce taxes, which should always be the plan, you have to deal with the short-term problems, which is your, your increasing debt. You have more problems. You increased the library 7% last year. Our sheriff keeps speaking about a $4 million reduction. He can't find it in his budget. We've got to look at every single line item and cut every single <coughs> line item. We have to make it affordable for people to stay in their homes. We don't need more programs in the county. We need to cut the programs in the county. We're forcing everybody out of the county. The only other state comes in with the C1. That affects everybody in the county. We've got to take the whole envelope, look at it, not one piece at a time, the whole thing. We are being destroyed. And one of the main things destroying us is the county budget. Start cutting it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to respond to just one thing that Mr. Gutler had said. Um, part of the uh, Securing Our Children's Future Bond Act in question in 2018 in that referendum. Uh, part of that funding was also to enhance school security, and that allows for silent panic alarms to be installed in every public school. Now, being a public school principal, um, I fully supported that, and I welcome that, and I think when it comes to an issue of public safety and security upgrades for our school buildings where all our children are, I have zero problems 
with that being something that is, is a taxable item. I think it's a need. And now, like I said, this isn't a discussion. This is my response back to you. But again, I find that to be you know, short-sighted, and I understand that it is bundled together with vocational education and other such items. However, that segment of it is very necessary. Walk a day in my shoes and tell me it's not. First of all, when this was proposed, none of our legislators told the people it was going to come down on our property taxes. And I confronted Parker Space with that. The people did not know. The bill said they were going to publish the bill no, they didn't. They published a statement. The voters were never aware of what they were voting on. Look at the last bond issue for schools. Big investigations. They've never found the money. You've just turned these bureaucrats loose with $500 million. Thank you very much. I have a motion to bring it back to the board, please. So moved. Second. All in favor, please see the bill. Aye. Aye. Uh, do we have free home to comments or can we just wait till tomorrow? As long as if there's anything obviously like within the budget from today that we can we discuss. Can yeah, that would okay. be fine. Okay. Uh, no consent agendas, no approval of minutes, no appointments, no resolutions, no awards. So we're at number 16, which is financial 2020, the budget review. Any motion to open that? Okay. I'd be happy to give you a presentation if you'd like. We're ready for that. Yes. Can we sit over there so you can see it? Uh, there's nothing to see. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you have it before you. That's the, that's the hazard of negotiating labor contracts and trying to prepare the budget simultaneously. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, no PowerPoint presentation. Uh, there will be a PowerPoint presentation at the time that the budget is introduced. <clears throat> uh, I know that this board and the public have heard from me that the most significant policy adopted by the county on an annual basis is its operating budget. The budget is developed in collaboration with county department administrators, constitutional officers, and a variety of agencies and institutions that have a legal entitlement to receive funding from the county. The budget subcommittee prepares recommendations in the form of a draft document and it is the board of chosen freeholders that ultimately determines the needs and interests of the county by the public hearing and adoption of the budget. Significant dollar increases are seen in the proposed 2020 county budget in public safety other expenses, public work salary and wages, general government other expenses, health and welfare other expenses, and capital improvements. The expense side of the budget is assigned by department and divided within each department into a salary and wages and other expenses. Those expenditures are presented in a line item format. These appropriations are the platform that allow the county to deliver the services to its taxpayers and stakeholders. The county is required to comply with several, several budget caps and budget regulations. These laws include the 1977 cap that prohibits the county from increasing the property tax levy by more than 2.5% unless action is taken by the governing body to increase the property tax levy. The 2010 property tax levy cap establishes a formula that limits the county's amount to be raised by taxation to 2% of the prior year, prior year amount. And then the 2017 county entity cap which limits the annual increase funded by the county property tax levy of certain county entity budget requests. So the state has, got, has issued its annual guidance documents regarding the budgetary caps as of the distribution of this draft budget. Uh, the COLA for calendar year 2020 is at 2.5%. Uh, in other words, the automatic increase to the 1977 cap is 2.5%, which is the tax statutory maximum uh, the board of chosen freeholders may pass a COLA resolution increasing that cap base to three and a half percent and as I mentioned at our last freeholder meeting with the resolution that the board considered the cap base adjustment that you all have uh, considered allows us to be able to bank the difference between the amount raised and that three and a half percent 
for future budget cycles, which supports tax rate stability in the event of unforeseen increased expenses. I'm pleased to report that the county is within all of the permitted budgetary cap requirements, with one exception, and that is the Board of Elections. Uh, I'm currently working with the Board of Elections in an attempt to resolve that cap issue. Uh, just some of the highlights on the budget. The public safety other expenses allows for, and the gentleman from Lafayette had mentioned uh, shared services and contract services. Uh, we're seeing the benefits of the implementation of the contract services agreement with Morris County for the housing of adult inmates. Uh, and while the reduction in staffing is offset with that contract service amount, it's extremely important that the board and the public realize by no longer housing adult inmates in our jail, the county has effectively reduced its liability of tens of millions of dollars of capital improvements that would otherwise have to go into that facility. In addition, uh, the public safety improvements include improvements to the communication center capabilities with additional tower site leases and equipment, uh, which will improve uh, both communications for the sheriff's office uh, and the overall uh, capabilities of the center itself. Public work salary and wages, uh, we are dedicating specific resources to improve road, bridge, and tree crew staffing levels. And we are expanding the funding for the Office of Mosquito Control to meet increased service demand. General government other expenses include addressing compensation issues with skilled staff to deal with recruitment and retention issues that the board heard about last fall, specifically in the departments of engineering and planning, information technology, and fleet management. And also the budget provides for our ability to implement a time and attendance system for increased accountability and internal control. Also, you, as you, the, the board is aware, that this budget advances a grant application for the library construction bond funding, uh, which will be at no cost to the county taxpayer. I'm gonna skip over the appropriation comments that I have in as much as these comments reflect the budget that was reviewed with the operating, uh, the operating budget subcommittee as well as the Capital Projects Committee. If there are specific questions relative to those changes, I, I'm certainly happy to, to answer that. Uh, but we've been through uh, most of that before. Um, moving on to, to page six. Uh, there are a number of suggested modifications to the proposed county budget. Uh, from the document that was reviewed with the Budget Subcommittee and the Capital Projects Subcommittee. The modifications are as a result of new construction within the county, as well as changes to grant revenues that we've been apprised of. The proposed changes are seen as follows. So the additional revenues or changes to the revenues include supplemental Social Security at an increase of just over $25,000. The new construction amount that I'll get into greater detail uh, in a moment is $361,819. And then the reserve from the sale of the homestead of $3.5 million, which would be the matching funds that would be used in the library grant application. Reductions in the revenues that the board had previous previously seen include a reduction in the reserve to pay debt service of almost $76,000, reductions in grant revenues of just over $26,000, and then a reduction in the amount to be raised by taxation by $121,130. Those changes in revenues then have to equal changes in appropriations. 
and we see a reduction in general government salary and wages of almost $32,000. Information technology, other expenses of $35,000. Public work salaries and wages down $5,000. Health and welfare salary and wages up $15,000. Social services administration up $17,077. <coughs> Grant expenses coming down the equal amount that grant revenues went down of $26,000. Additional uh, funds for the capital improvement appropriation of $160,000. The whopping $30 of prior year bills and uh, capital reserve for library renovations of $3.5 million. As a result of the modifications, the proposed 2020 county budget calls for revenues and appropriations totaling $117,274,562. Total other expenses are up $2.79 million, and total salaries and wages are down $1.28 million. As a result, total operations are up $1.5 million or a 1.72% increase over the 2019 adopted budget. Again, it should, be, it should just be noted that the decrease in the salary and wages uh, is primarily from the reduction of staff at the jail. And as a result, uh, the primary cost driver for total other expenses going up is the contract service amount due Morris County for the housing of the adult family. I have a question. Um, Greg, would you explain uh, the reserve from the sale of the homestead? Uh, what is that? What is the permissible use of that? Because I know in some of our budget meetings we did discuss that for the capital reserve for the library renovations, but again, I am not at all convinced that I would ever support that. But can you explain uh, the reserve from the sale of the homestead? Sure. So at the time that the county uh, sold uh, the homestead, those proceeds were restricted by resolution of the freeholder board at that time uh, to be used for non-recurring uh, expenses, uh, non-recurring operating expenses, or uh, excuse me, for recurring operating expenses. So they were restricted and excluded from being used to fund operations. Uh, that money has uh, sat in a reserve for the sale of, of the homestead. And with the Library Construction Bond Act having been passed in the fall of 2017, uh, applications are now due uh, sometime within the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, as it has been discussed with the Budget Subcommittee and the Capital Projects Committee, uh, the Library Director and the Director of Facilities um, have recommended to the Board that uh, an application be made uh, for renovation and expansion of the Dennis Branch uh, Library in Newton. That coincides with the Newton Library Association owner of that building and property uh, expressing its desire to divest itself of the land and the facility and give it to the county. And that in part uh, was what helped uh, the evaluation process and ultimately the recommendation uh, that if the county were to uh, consider an application to the state for this library construction funding, uh, that it be done so uh, to enhance the Dennis Library. Don, one of the questions I had about that when we briefly discussed it was, with the gain of that real estate plus the project, would that be worth more than we put in? Meaning, would it be a net gain on the books as far as value, um, which at face value, it seems it would be, but you know that's something that I would want to look at. I know it can't be used. I know the 3.5 million can't be used for you know general operating expenses, 
but again, in a year that we have some significant things that you know need to be done. I talk about this all the time, the wants versus the needs. Um, I just think it's worth having a discussion. You know, are there any other non-recurring expenses that that money could be, you know, put towards? That's all. So the the new construction, the county tax administrator has certified that the new construction in the county and the revenue that that would generate totals three hundred sixty-one thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars. As a result, uh, it's proposed that this revenue be used to increase the appropriation for capital improvements, decrease the reserve to pay debt service, and decrease the amount to be raised by taxes. These modifications accomplish three key goals as established by the Board of Chosen Freeholders. One is implementing the provisions of the county's recently adopted debt management and fund balance policies being mindful of New Jersey's high property taxes and keeping this year's annual county tax increase below 2%, and investing in the county's infrastructure, its human capital, allowing for the efficient delivery of services and support of economic development, and meeting the needs of our most needy residents. So the proposed 2020 county budget calls for a tax rate increase of 0 .005010. The change in the county tax rate represents an average monthly tax increase of $5.01 per $100,000 of equalized valuation. The proposed 2020 draft, but draft library budget calls for a rate increase of 0 .001967. The change in the county library tax rate represents a 1.97 annual increase for every $100,000 of equalized valuation. The county open space tax rate is proposed with no increase. The total annual tax rate impact is an increase of $6.98 for every $100,000 of equalized valuation. The proposed budget, again. Excuse me, I'm looking under you said represents an average monthly tax increase of $5.01. Uh, but you mean annual yes. of $5. Mm -hmm. That's right. a big yes. difference. Yes. 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 It's not monthly $5, dollars. Dollars. it's annually. Annual. Per $100,000. Per $100,000. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. The proposed budget calls for appropriations of $117,274,562. Total operations are up $1.5 million or 1.72% from the adopted 2019 budget. The most significant dollar increases in the 2020 budget, as I mentioned earlier, are seen in public safety other expenses, which is offset by the savings in public safety salary and wages public work, salary and wages, general government, other expense, and health and welfare, other expense. And as we've gone through this, I just want to thank Alka Yetter, our Chief Financial Officer, for her efforts in the preparation of this draft document, and also would like to make a special mention of the county's budget director, Mary Joan Shannon, who is leaving the county for another professional opportunity. I've had that pleasure of working with Mary uh, for more than two and a half years now, and would like to wish her much success uh, in her new venture. And that concludes my summary of the proposed county budget. Thank you. I have a few questions. Sure. Um, we had an increase of four hundred thousand dollars from the state for the mental health. Was it? Um, do you recall? You know what I'm talking about, uh, Greg? Yes. It. It. The. The appropriation itself is referred to as patient maintenance in state psychiatric facilities, and. That total increase uh, coming to us from the state uh, is 
the increase is $402,578. Increase in cost. So the, the increase in cost, in that's correct. Right. So, and in, if in, we evaluated that and make sure those are our, our patients, is that how that works? Uh, that's correct. So, um, so that have we done an analysis to make sure they are? are that, that's the responsibility of the county adjuster, yes. And that's done, that's the question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, that's an unexpected increase of force. a number of those over this year. Maybe that'd be a good thing to put together. There's a list of the uh, unexpected increase in cost. That's, that surprised me because I don't, um, I don't understand how you can jump to a $400,000 rate. So what happened on that appropriation is we get an estimate every year from the state and then they're about three or four years behind in reconciling. So we get an adjustment either up or down. And last year we got an adjustment down of 350,000 or so, somewhere around there. It's like your electric bill where they guess what yeah. it's gonna be. Yes, exactly. Okay. And this year we had our estimate for 2020 plus the adjustment from 2015 year, which was an increase of 97,000. So that swing is what caused the, the big jump but there's, we have to budget in our state document what the state gives us, which is why we have that huge jump. We're, we're current, currently evaluating other ways that we might be able to budget moving forward that would reduce the impact um, of such large changes. Um, and, and Elk and I have been in discussions with our auditor um, and may even result in some conversations that I'll have with our state legislators in terms of uh, some mechanisms that we might be able to uh, to use to try to level out and so that we're not dealing with such large changes in, on an annual basis. Right. Um, okay, the other um, Item will be the speaker system for this room. We're looking at with thirty thousand. I have not submitted any quotes yet. Oh, but there's money in here for that, correct? There, there are monies available within the uh, capital improvement fund uh, for uh, for audio visual improvements to this room. Yes. Well, I would love to remove that uh, that money. Can you hear me, Mr. Gettler? Faintly. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> this is the original. If you speak equipment. to me, I can understand you. When you're speaking to them, maybe about 50%. I just, I just don't know whether I would spend thirty or fifty thousand dollars on a, a, a system that I haven't. We heard one complaint when we had about a hundred people here, and. Um, I would like to see that used to reduce the taxes. The the impact of those funds would not would not have any appreciable effect on the amount to be raised in taxes because it's a capital expense. It's not it's not in your 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 general operations. Only the only the five percent down payment is in the budget. Well. Uh, for it's, that, not, it's not yeah. in our capital. Yeah, it's not in the it's capital. It's not in our capital plan. plan this year. We're going to use that towards economic development to create rateables to, to have a real tax rate. Well, um, also, too, it should be noted, um, Freehold Yardley, that from the draft budget that uh, was reviewed with this budget subcommittee and the capital projects committee, the amount to be raised in taxes was at that point was targeted at 2%. The draft budget as presented this evening uh, sets that at 1.83%. So it's it's less than 2%. Okay, so question that kind of goes along, well it's not for the cameras, but um, or not for the microphones rather, we had talked about security upgrades for this 
building specifically, cameras and the like, where are we with that in this budget? Uh, there are monies that are put uh, into the capital budget. That is uh, under the capital budget and six year capital plan. <clears throat> that is set aside for uh, general security improvements. Uh, the security improvements to this building uh, were funded in last year's capital program. And you may have noticed as you enter the building, uh, you've seen uh, card readers that have been installed. Uh, so we're finishing the installation of that uh, right now. Uh, but there, there is uh, $80,000 that is set aside for uh, general security integration. In addition to that, there is uh, a total of $94,000 that has been set aside for security improvements at the, ju at the judicial complex. Um, I also, I had a meeting today with uh, the Sussex County Arts and Heritage Council, their executive board, and two representatives from the state, from the New Jersey um, Council on the Arts. And apparently uh, any release of funds from the state to the county was predicated on this meeting. So we had to schedule it sooner rather than later. So um, I received some information that was quite surprising. The Arts and Heritage Council has an expense budget and I did send this out to the freeholders just for your review. I don't know if any of you got a chance to look at it. Um, it's $129,183. Um, it is second lowest in the state right now. Um, of that, the state of New Jersey, uh, our grant that comes from the state of New Jersey is $49,497. Of that $49,497, our Arts and Heritage Council re-grants out to different groups that apply. There's 14 different groups that have applied 34,648, which is really wonderful. But this is the alarming part, support from the county. Um, there's a column that explains how much each county provides to their Arts and Heritage Council. The state made no, minced no words with me to explain there are three nonprofit arts and heritage councils in the state of New Jersey. One is Morris County, one is Monmouth County, and they just deal with arts. In Sussex County, they also deal with history and art together. Um, Monmouth County, their county allocates $39,019 to their arts and heritage council. Morris County allocates $21,650. Some of the counties comparable in size to us, let's say, let's take a look at Salem. $34,913. County of Sussex gives our Arts and Heritage Council $3,200. So when I got this, I said that has to be a misprint, you mean $32,000. And they said, oh, contraire, no, it's $3,200. I said, explain. So apparently back in, up till around 2008, we were allocating $15,000 to the Arts and Heritage Council. That dropped to 7,500, which then has been reduced 6,000, 5,000, 4,000. Now we're at 3,200 for the past couple of years. Um, so again, they are responsible for getting um, donations to make up the difference. They currently have about 70 volunteers that come in and help. They have two part-time office staff members. Uh, the recommendation is that they should have an executive director because in the there are some changes that the state is requiring for them to implement in order to even receive the $49,000 that they're approved for as part of, um, of their audit and, and whatnot, and not an audit by way of mismanagement of money, an audit just in practices, because you have four individuals on the executive board that are trying to run this. They're volunteers, and they're having a bit of a difficult time. Uh, they're trying multiple ways to bring in extra revenue, and uh, it's, it's a real challenge. The state is asking, you know, if we if we value our Arts and Heritage Council to the tune of $3,200 a year, 
what is the impetus for them to increase from the 49,000 that they're giving us right now? Considering again, I'll just give you a quick rundown. This is some of the numbers from the counties. Atlantic County, their county gives 115,000. Bergen, 420,000. Burlington, 175,000. Camden, again, is the closest to us, 19,005. Cape May County, $70,500 from their county. We are getting $3,200. Now I talk about needs and wants, right? On Spring Street, the Arts and Heritage Council has their gallery. Their rent, just their rent alone, is $18,000 for the year. So their rent for that space is $18,000. They're regranting out $34,000 to the different schools and arts groups and senior citizens groups and whatnot. And, and the best we do is $3,200. So I'd be honest, I went into that meeting saying, this is a want, this is not the year, don't ask. And when I saw the paper, I think our, our funding is seri at serious risk from the state of New Jersey, and I, the disparity is unbelievable in comparison to the other counties. So um, they're not asking for a lot at all. They actually didn't even ask for a specific number. I think they would be extraordinarily pleased, even if we raised it from the 3,200 up to 7,500 that it was. I don't think this is the year to bump it to 15,000. I mean, I'd love to, to say to you, wow, we're really doing quite well and we're reducing tax, everything's wonderful. That's not the case and we all know it. But I feel that um, you know, in, in good faith to actually be able to, to give them the level, you know, even after the first cut in 2008, I don't think we have much of a choice simply if we would like to have the Arts and Heritage Council be in existence any longer. Because without intervention, we're gonna have a problem. So just something to think about. So I know, Greg, you said it's not, I know it's in the capital budget for, you know, you said it would be negligible to 30,000 comparatively. Um, but I, I feel we have to do something if we want to maintain an Arts and Heritage Council in the county period. I think we have to have to make an adjustment to that. So. They've been struggling for a while. We spoke about that a couple of years ago. I, I, I never in my life, I honestly thought it was a typo immediately. I said, you mean 32,000? And they said, no, we don't. So. I have a couple of questions. Um, SS, uh, South County Community College. I see two spots with deferred maintenance at a, let's see. Let's make sure I get the right number. Looks like uh, 412,000 in PSTA. Um, okay, I think that's a half, is that a half a million. What page are you on here? Um, page two of the capital uh, budget. The PSTA is the Public Safety Training Academy. So that's so 300,000 is deferred maintenance for the Public Safety Training Academy, and the other deferred maintenance is for the actual college at 412,000. Do, do we have a um, general idea of what it is that maintenance is for? Um, I know they were working on the basement at the PS. It was part of the presentation that the um, college gave back. I'm sure they gave it to the Board of School Estimate as well. I'd have to pull it, I don't have it with me. Okay, so this is a result of, of last year's when, or when they met? Yes, last so year. the Board of School Estimate from last year, that funding goes into our so capital that's budget funding this, year. For this year. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, I remember that being okay. To have some kind of present presence as far as economic development county because I think growing the rate of bulls through businesses is a is a real way we can increase revenue and help lower taxes without impacting the taxpayer. 
So, you know, I'd just like to, to have that discussion at some point. I agree. I agree. Um, if, if we don't do something with economic development to get tax rates here, um, because we are not, I don't foresee where we're going to have a lot of building. Um, we are a, uh, without having someone reaching out, bringing people in to do some work here. Um, we've had some success uh, with you know, the center in um, Wantage, with uh, apartments there. Um, however, it was a, uh, an idea of a potential uh, motel, hotel type of thing, operation there, and that didn't follow through. And yet, <clears throat> there's such a need that, um, uh, I want to say service electric, it's not that, a selective uh, insurance company is actually buying houses in areas, yes. so their staff yeah. can stay. But we, for whatever reason, can't seem to get a hotel to come up here. And there needs to be some way to sit down the way other communities do, to get people to come here and say, look, here's something you can do. And we've seen a lot of growth in the wedding business up in our county, mm -hmm. large growth in that and we're going to stymie it by not having the proper facilities for that. And this is the kind of stuff that creates real future for the county. And unfortunately, you know, what used to be an economic development partnership, we we stopped being their partner. And now we have private, you know, a private group doing it themselves, and the county has no footprint. And, uh, and I think that's wrong. And I think that's where one of the places we're missing the boat in helping the county move forward. And, and it affords an opportunity to look at a county view. And there are communities that want to stay green and, and don't want any development, right. and there are those that want development. But either way, development in the county helps the entire county and the entire tax base because we provide countywide services. So I think it's important that we move in this direction in any way we can. I, I, I think to have someone that's answerable, that's going to give us a report, that's going to say, hey, we, there are people interested what are the things we have to overcome? And we can work, and we will know what communities are looking to do this and how can we help. So I, if we can look through this budget in some way come up with just even a small amount of money to start it, to, to be able to say, let's give this a try. I, I believe, in fact, this, this budget begins the, the process of, of what you're, you're talking about in terms of rebuilding the division of planning. Um, the Division of Planning is the entity that economic development relies upon right. in terms of understanding uh, water capacities, wastewater capacities, land use capacities. And the county currently has uh, two licensed planners on staff when historically the county had upwards of six licensed planners on staff. The, the challenge, of course, is one of those planners is uh, specifically dedicated to transportation planning and transportation management as funded by the North Jersey uh, right. TPA. And uh, so you, you currently just have one, one planner who's tending to a, a myriad of needs for the, uh, the PAC and uh, SWAC and, and all of the other uh, the, County Planning Board. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of work for one person and by restoring the uh, position of planning director uh, that at least will begin to provide some of the human resources uh, needed to be able to be a little more strategic in terms of getting uh, our, our economic development partnership some of the data that they need uh, and increasing the capacity of that office uh, to be able to uh, assist uh, businesses that, that look to come to Sussex County. Don't forget, um, I had gone to the League of Municipalities, not the League, um, the Sussex County. Right. And some of the information that was coming out of Trenton and that update was also that under our current governor's energy plan and projections, that any new development is now going to be subjected to um, checks that it won't leave a quote negative mm -hmm. climate footprint so please keep that in mind because Sussex County has been the recipient how many times of this 
So if we're going to put our eggs in the let's develop economically basket, um, I don't necessarily think under this administration that's the best way to go because if you think for a hot minute that we're gonna be given carte blanche under these even more restrictive circumstances, we will become even less appealing for anybody that might want to come and, uh, and establish a business here. So again, I'm not saying that, that it's not possible, but I think it's gonna be another hurdle and it's going to take time. And from a public standpoint, I remember not too many years ago sitting out there and looking both even at my municipality and my knee jerk immediate reaction is always to say, instead of spending, cut what's currently there. It'd be great if we had more revenue come in because then we'll be able to reduce you know, uh, the taxes. But if that does not happen, look what is already there. That's not value judgment on anything. We've all been working. You two have been working harder than any human beings I've known in the past you know, six months even, projecting out ahead. I understand that. But there has to be, uh, there's gotta be a way. I don't know. I feel like the state does a, does a fine job of backing us into a corner in a lot of ways. I think that this current board is gonna be paying for the sins and I'm not gonna sit up here and say solar, solar, solar because every board before us since solar have, has said solar. Yes, we get it. We understand it's our cross to bear. It doesn't surprise anybody. We understand we have that burden in the budget every year. If it wasn't in the budget, yes, we would have a, a real chance, $2 million. So there would be no raise if we were not paying for that. But unfortunately we are paying for that. But that doesn't negate the fact that there's still the responsibility to look to see is there anything we can do differently. Rome wasn't built in a day. I appreciate the sheriff's ideas of the consolidation and moving everybody to the jail because uh, the, in Morris County because we know that we were not going to realize immediate, unbelievable millions of dollars of savings right then and there. But as you see what the projections are, it starts out and then gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the savings just continue to compound because of that decision being made. So uh, I'm grateful for that and for that you know, forward thinking approach. But again, um, it's just, it's, it's, it can be hard to swallow. And, and our debt is out of control like Josh had been championing. We all had voted prior to Anthony joining the board that we were gonna move forward with a, with a debt reduction plan because the prior board had a 50 year debt reduction plan um, you know, proposed from some of the members of that, that prior board. And, and a 50-year debt plan, um, I don't know how many, Anthony, you'd probably be here, but I don't know how many of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but it's for our children and our grandchildren. I, children, I get it, I get it, but quite frankly, 50 years, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. So anyhow, um, I could wax poetic on this forever, but I'm just, I'm having a bit of an existential issue, uh, just with some of it, again, with the library, I understand it's a, it's a one-time shot, um, you know, the voters, uh, wanted it, you know, with, with statewide. I understand that. I understand that we have to spend it in order to match it, but it's it's very, very difficult to do that when we just have so much debt and, and we're raising it. But it's not close to anything wrong for the library. The thing with the library is we're getting the library anyway. It, it was like all of these things fell into place at one time. The group that was in charge that owned the library is turning it over to the county. So that's going to be ours. That's going to be our that building, that library is now our responsibility. At the same time, that Library Act referendum came down, and I think there were only about five, seven, seven municipalities that voted no in Sussex County. The rest all voted yes, and and that would then give you the money for a match. You're going to pay for this referendum with, whether you get any benefit from it or not. Your taxpayers are going to pay for it. The building needs the renovation. It needs the handicap accessibility. People want wanted and the money for the homestead was there only for a one-time project uh, but i'm going to put that aside because that's up to you um, i do want to talk about things that we put in place last year and this year when in talking about debt reduction and about trying to get to a point where we don't raise taxes we can come out with a a budget that has no increases and you put two policies in place um, last year we put the debt management policy in place for the county that will reduce county debt Prevent the freeholder board from issuing debt on behalf of a third party and not recurring capital projects over $10 million will need voter approval. Then the prior year, you put in a fund balance policy 
that was adopted at the end of the year 2018 that fosters prudent tax rate management and protects our strong credit rating. So policies are being in place to be followed to get us to the point that we want to get. But we don't want to talk about solar, we don't want to talk other things, but I'm going to talk about solar. You've got $1.8 million in your budget for solar every year. When we had the storms Irene and we had Lee, um, we had so much damage, it was, I think it was about $11 million in damage uh, for bonding. Um, out of that, we had, I just want to get the number correct for you, 160 projects from both storms. Uh, the majority were our bridges. We had 145 bridges related projects. The rest were road related. We still have four bridges that are not opened. Um, and we still have different remediation projects from those two storms that we haven't completed yet. So those two issues right there were like two bombs that were set off that just threw us back. Uh, things that you, we couldn't help, we, none of us were a part of that. Um, but things that we have to deal with with our budget every year. And you're correct, if we didn't have that 1.8 million in here, if we didn't have that other like, uh, problem with the, the bridges and the storms, you would have money then to reduce. You would have it, but you don't right now. But putting the policies in place and give us the opportunity to look forward, talking about projecting your budgets out for 10 years into how we get to that position. And this is how you get it, it's step by step. Talking about economic development, because we talked about for a couple of years now, the need for that position, the need for planning, but the, the position also in connection with the economic development. There are grants out there that we, we were looking to get for planning for Sussex County, which we could not take. Not that we weren't uh, capable of getting it awarded to us, we couldn't take it because we didn't have those positions in place to handle it. So, you know, you can, you can bring a person in to handle it, um, but without the money and resources, you have, you have another problem. But there are grants available once that position is in place. I just want you to know that. Uh, we, we actually brought Tammy and Greg went to speak to the Highlands Council who has $10 million of grant money. They have a lot of grant money. They were willing to give it to us, but we couldn't take it. So there are a lot of uh, complexities around the idea of those two positions, one in the county and one over at the Economic Development Plan, so the partnership. All good, all good issues. Um, all good things to talk about and to think about. If I can just respond a little bit to um, Mr. Yardley, I, I do believe uh, there is communication taking place right now with hotels uh, in the county. Um, and Ms. Fantasia told a good story about what she found today when she visited the Arts Council. And I have a similar one in my conversation with the Morris Sussex and Warren Workforce Development Board which was in essence that Sussex County uh, has been absent uh, from that um, and therefore what it's receiving is not at all uh, close to what Morris County is receiving and uh, I did hear from that board that perhaps there was some, um, still some hard feelings over solar. Um, so I have had a conversation with Greg and with Elka about uh, really representing Sussex County uh, to this tri-county group here in terms of uh, what we stand for and where we're going. And technical education is a big component of that. Education is a big component of that. And that library project is interesting in the sense of, you're right, 17 out of 24 municipalities in this county voted in favor of court. You're right, we're gonna be paying the price for that no matter what. Uh, you're right, taking over that property certainly helps us from an asset standpoint but also the Chamber of Commerce has come out in support of that under the idea that what would happen is it would move the needle on some businesses who are interested in moving in that location because now you've solidified two staple properties, um, which would be the McGuire Chevrolet property um, and then this property with additional meeting space, therefore foot traffic, therefore development, and therefore whatever. So it, it's an interesting, um, situation that we're presented with and I still agree with Don in some respects that I think there's still some more convincing to be done on, on that type of project but I don't think the benefits are limited to a library I, I think there's much more to it than that um, so her, we're going to be Sussex County is going to be representing itself 
um, from a workforce development standpoint. And frankly, I think the county needs to take the lead on workforce development, particularly from technical education, which is where I think jobs uh, will be coming from. It's also uh, very much in line with your current students, your current high school students in Sussex County. Uh, never before has been more inclined to look at technical programs than right now. So when discussing um, what the county college is doing from a technical aspect, it's really important. It's important that it is complementary with what the county technical school is doing, and therefore it's important that what the county technical school is doing does not conflict with what other public education institutions are doing, because they've gotten a significant hit of state aid uh, in terms of what it is that they can offer. So all of these dialogues, very much so have, have trickle down effects, but I do want to thank Greg and Elka for presenting this budget. I've spent a significant amount of time. You, you got to be tired of seeing me, right? <laughs> I spent a lot of time with you guys over the last week going over this budget, and um, it's something that wasn't talked about as much in this budget uh, as I think it should have been. I don't think we should, we should undersell it, and that's the investment in human capital. Um, that's important. I, I think previous boards for previous years for sometimes good reasons have um, not up to its bargain in providing our, uh, our employees um, with what it is that, that they need and deserve. And I think this is a step uh, in that direction. And I'm very concerned. So you talked about uh, those positions in terms of uh, not accepting grants. This also fills the need of I'm concerned with our staffing that we wouldn't be able to accept transportation trust funding um, as well because of uh, how, how light we are in certain staffing areas that this budget addresses. So this budget addresses a lot of weaknesses, um, and I think it's a good starting point. Certainly I'm not thrilled with everything in it, um, but I think it's a great starting point. I think that's a testament to the work that you guys have done, so thank you. And Mr. Serenelli, you as well. I see you over there. May I suggest a comment on something that uh, Anthony just said regarding the human capital? Uh, again, this has been a year of uncovering things that might be shocking. Yeah. Um, it is quite shocking when you realize that your workforce, compared to the county and even municipalities in this county, we're paying at times 20% less than what municipalities in the county are paying for a comparable job position. Yep. And outside of the county, there is no competition. So quite honestly, to retain quality employees that don't just come for probationary period for a year of experience and then mm -hmm. jump, this is critical. Um, and also just for morale and for paying people what they deserve. Um, again, I don't in any way think that we made mistakes in any type of adjusting salaries to meet no. what they should have been. Not at all, I will stand by that every day. So I think that was one of the smartest about, things Think about that we all did. the money spent shipping work out that we couldn't do ourselves because we lost so On consultants. On consultants. You know, Unbelievable. Like you said, you know, it's hard to question others' decisions, especially back when the economy tanked and decisions were made to cut spending here, to you know, stop doing capital projects, to cut positions, and that went on until now. And you know, then you find yourself in a position where there was borrowing because you weren't you couldn't raise the money, so you were borrowing, you were cutting, and so now you're in debt and you're understaffed and you're underpaid. And you start from there. So that's a it's a terrible place to start. But you know what? That's the position we're in, and that's what we have to do the best we can with that position. But to the point in which you could be losing grant funding because of your staffing level. Yes. Yeah. And you know, what well, point is there a red flag? Well, the red flags are up. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're up. They're, they're, <laughs> the, the engineering department, that one time we may have from nine to 12 engineers, we have three. Mm -hmm. The last engineer that left was, was handling about uh, millions of dollars worth of grants. And, and just for example, last year, we had $36 million mm -hmm. invested into projects, capital projects, okay, that our engineering department was handling. $24 million of that was from grant funding. Well, when you lose so many engineers that you can't take grants anymore, and our infrastructure is, is in disrepair as it is, you just fall farther behind. So the idea to become competitive in order to uh, attract engineers is really important to us. And engineers seem to be um, 
uh, problematic then. I know Picatinny uh, Arsenal is having trouble finding mm -hmm. engineers. So there's a shortage. It seems a shortage of engineers. And of course, in a good economy, private industry is paying more. So they're going out of government work and they're going there. But we're losing grant money because of it, because we can't handle the money coming in. So it's an issue. And it's, it's been handled in this budget. And, and I want to thank Gray and Elkin. I don't think you get enough credit during the year because the budget didn't come together just in the past few weeks. This budget came together over the past year in the decisions that you made in managing. And I want to thank you for the good work that you do. Um, and Ray also for your, your work and in investment in time in, in the county as well. It's a good budget. It's addressing a lot of the things to rebuild. I think a lot of the problems went right back to 2008 when we had the recession. And I know as a mayor at that time, I know I, I cut privatized garbage, it helped everything. I cut everything I could cut. We were looking at a 23% increase. And we had to get it down. And I know the county did the same. And what happened is some of those cuts were so deep that you couldn't bounce back right away. So now we're at a point where we're beginning to bounce back. And I think this budget is helping us do that. So it's addressing a lot of the needs that we've been talking about for the last couple of years in this budget. And I think the intention of this board to reduce debt reduction and to get to a point as we move forward with our budgets to have no tax increase um, is admirable. It really is. So I think it was really good work all around. I thank everybody for it. Yes, thank you guys for your hard work. I know uh, almost every time I called the county, you guys were uh, talking budgets <laughs> in the last several months. <laughs> so. yeah. And there's a lot of intangible things that nobody will ever see or talk about that you guys did to put us in a position to, to even have it turn out this way. So for all that stuff, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I could, I've lived here about 36 years. The kids were born here. It's my intent to stay here. And we do need to find a way to control the taxes. Unfortunately, the solar put us in this situation. I still feel that we should find a way to work with the chamber to see whether it takes getting some volunteers um, to look at things, to help with things in, in the way of economic development. To leave that not addressed, to, to there are buildings here, there are properties as, as you go through the county um, that may, someone may be interested in doing something here, uh, which would help, again, with the tax benefits that we have. Unless, we're going to look at something and say, well, even tourism, to help promote tourism. There's a lot of dollars that goes in advertising. I mean, the, the ski resort advertises. And then during the summer, they advertise, and the golf courses advertise. No one has ever sat down, or, or maybe they have. And the, the problem is information, having the right information. To say, we're getting people that come to the county. They come through, spend money. That helps our economics in the county. And maybe we need to look at that. And I think that uh, we just need to find a way to make sure we have the information and how we could help. There was a time in the county when someone wanted to come in the county and they went to a local town. There was a meeting that was held here. And you had, they went through the town local building department. They had the county engineer for defective. Everybody sat in one room. Health department, do I need a septic? Do I need... Oh, I don't, or I do. Do I need a well? What's the water like? Do we have radiation in the water? That's an issue now. There needs to be some avenue that we can say, hey, if you're interested in coming to Sussex County, we have a contact person, and where would you like to go? Or we have all of our municipalities say, look, those of you, because some, some don't want development, but those of you that want development, let's sit down and talk. So when you get somebody, you have a contact here in the county. That's what I'm talking about, and the least that I think we need to do, because if we leave it out there somewhere, we might miss an opportunity where maybe it was a matter of a misunderstanding. And someone says, hey, oh man, we'll never get that septic built. Never gonna happen. But they never talk to the right people. That's what has happened, and over the years, I'm retired, I'm out there talking to everybody, and some of the stories that I hear, uh, I'm, I'm shocked at how people get information because they go to, oh, well, my, 
I'm a developer. My friend told me, go talk to that man over there. And I talked to this person in this town. Said, oh, we, we would never want to do that. And then you find out later on, well, why didn't you come to the planning board? Why didn't you? There were all these things that go on, misinformation. I think we need to find a way. This board needs to find a way to make sure we have a conduit to the communities that want to be involved in economic development. And, and you need, when you go to the economic development meetings, you've got to make sure they understand that we're here and we have the experts and we can't be recognized as the department or the county that doesn't want development. And right. that has been a uh, tag on the county. So well, this, when, so I, when I went through, to, went through this, I just called the planner. Eric Snyder came down, he walked with us right through the redevelopment. He was with us through the whole planning process. But we don't have that director of planning anymore. All, the, ma all, the, mayors know the, call, all, all the mayors know that all the planner here. I think we should have the discussions yeah. offline. Yeah. Just well, because this isn't. But, but I would like to talk to you because I, I think we, we had this some discussions today. My subcommittee recognized the gentleman that addressed just what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. It's an issue. Anything else? Okay, we can move on then. All right. Um, personnel none, administrative report. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing outside of the budget. No council report, any unfinished business or new business? Okay. Um, I, I guess what, what I would ask from the board, um, if the board is satisfied, then uh, we need to provide direction to the chief financial officer um, as to uh, how she's to prepare the budget for the board's uh, consideration for introduction. Uh, as I had uh, previously suggested, if the board is satisfied uh, with the draft budget, that you would give consideration then uh, to having the budget introduced at our May 11th meeting. March. I'm so, uh, okay. yeah. sorry, March. March? Yeah. yeah. I'm dreaming of spring. That's good. Um, March 11th, uh, which then would That's the introduction. provide for the public hearing and uh, adoption at uh, on the April 8th meeting. April 18th? 8th. 8th. April 8th. Satisfaction. Okay. Okay. Fine with the dates, yeah. I guess the only outstanding item would be uh, what the board's pleasure is relative to uh, Freeholder Fantasia's request for the additional funds to be put uh, to the uh, Arts and Heritage Council. We spoke about it before. I think it would be a great idea to be able to support them. Last thing I want to see is is that the, we don't have it anymore in the county, that we lose it in the county. I mean, these volunteers work so hard, really, and there's so much to do. But they couldn't they once they lost their director, they didn't have the money to ever bring that position back. And ever since then it's been difficult uh, for them to actually organize and get all the work done when you don't have that leader sitting there. So I think it would be appropriate. As long as there's consensus amongst the board, I just wouldn't want to act independently. No, I, I, I agree. Um, and I did have one other question now that you brought that up, and that was, um, I know we've had some dialogue, and I've had some dialogue as well, in terms of um, providing a, a very small uh, amount of funding to help cover some costs for the Sussex County Food Pantry. Um, and I wanted to see if that um, is something that this board would be open to. I know I've had that conversation with Sylvia, but um, I have heard some um, dialogue from the people who uh, volunteer there that they could use a little bit of help. Um, we do provide them with a facility, so that is uh, certainly a significant amount of help, um, but certainly uh, for an amount that does not uh, go over $5,000, if possible and if agreeable. The food pantry is a need, not a want, so I would always support that. Don't have a line. I don't believe it. 
we um, have, have, we could identify uh, appropriations within the Division of Social Services. Uh, we're currently evaluating uh, how that might be accomplished. Yeah. Um, whether that would be done um, in terms of dollars or in kind, mm -hmm. um, which would, of course would be uh, mm -hmm. done in coordination with uh, the representatives from the food pantry. So that that's certainly something that could that we would, subject to uh, further investigation, we would be able to uh, accomplish. And, and based on what I've heard, I, I really think that, that that little amount may go along of helping people who want to help people uh, do that. Um, but thank you, Greg. For, yeah. The only other thing, like I said, is I've said economic development. Mm -hmm. I would like to see us support that. And we, this budget continues to support in a very nominal way uh, the county's contribution to the economic development partnership, which was started two years ago. Um, so we, we we will continue that uh, in in this budget as well. Any other comments? Okay. Well, just clarity to what the final budget is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you need an actual vote, but I think for Elka's sake, just for clarity is the 5000 for the Sussex County Food Pantry going to be in by approval of the majority of the freeholders as well as the Art Council increase to 7500 I should want to take a vote on that? Well, I think it, just for it, clarity, as long as, there, make sure as, long as there's consensus. Yeah, I don't think it needs a formal vote as long as or, or you're there agreeing are any, to Are there any objections? I thought my understanding when you were talking that you were looking to see if there was existing funding in social services. With, within social services, I would not need an additional $5,000 appropriation. Right. I, I have to do some additional investigating okay, okay. as to what mechanism we could accomplish okay. that stated goal. Um, there is not, there are not currently funds in this mm -hmm. budget that uh, I could identify in a similar fashion for the Arts and Heritage Council. I'm not suggesting that it shouldn't be in there, it's just... There's you know, nothing embedded anywhere that could be... Well, because they have, they already have their existing, that's the, that's the difference. That's just, that's just the other thing. Yeah. Right. Well, again, just for clarity, <laughs> will it will it be seventy five hundred? Because that is one individual separate line item for the Arts Council, uh, Arts and Heritage Council. Is there so we're, we're saying that there's not seven thousand dollars somewhere in this. Well, we don't even need December. that. Well, we don't need well, seven thousand five hundred. It's at thirty two hundred. Not, like not, I'm not. I'm not saying that we couldn't work to identify those funds. Yeah, we will find this provided that the, there's consensus amongst the board right. that we'll everyone see. agrees to advance that increase in that appropriation. Let's pull, let's pull the board. So is there anyone yes. that does not agree? Just, is there anyone that opposes the 7,500? It's an increase in about $3,000. Right. No. Okay. Okay, okay, that's all we need. Anything else? No. Okay, not hearing anything about the motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, public uh, session. Oh, we have public session. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, motion to open up to the public. So move. Second. In favor, please signify by saying that. Aye. Would anyone like to speak? <laughs> Just uh, three comments and one question. Okay. Uh, first comment, uh, I, I think we all agree on economic development. But I'm telling you, it's a pipe dream until you get central sewer and central. I can tell you that it's like the insurance. Well, what do you mean central? Like the county wide? Well, municipality wide or something like that. Well, some, that. some municipalities have that. Yeah. Yes, no. Uh, I was heavily involved in selecting insurance. It cost us $2 million, hard cost, put in the septic system, not soft gas. And we 
When we built that, we signed immediately on the line with Branchville that as soon as they had their plant up and operating, we would close ours. Why? The liability. You don't know how many times in the winter I would go by where our beds were and hope I didn't see green grass. Uh, the liability is huge if something wants to go wrong. And green grass in the winter is not what you want to see over your septic beds. Uh, two, I, I'd just like to say, I understand what Fiora Regard said, but uh, housing is a double-edged sword. It does bring rateables and into the town. But in a municipality where to build, it's going to uh, increase your school taxes immediately. Uh, and Mr. Hertzberg probably can talk to this better than me, but what happened in North Village is going to be a huge boom to the County of Sussex, but it won't be quite as huge a boom to Sparta because they're going to have to be picking up paying for all those all those kids are, who are in those houses. Uh, so, and I'm old. It was the third thing. I forgot. <laughs> But I, I'd like to uh, yield my two minutes or whatever I had left. It. Great. Uh, on, uh, I believe at the last three or meeting, uh, it was approved to go up to the 3%. Three and a half percent. Three and a half percent. Three and a half percent. But uh, I heard uh, 1.9. 1.8. 1.87% okay. is the appropriation increase. Yeah. And then a 3.5% cap is what we voted on. So that's our cap bank. Okay. So basically, you take 3.5 yeah, minus yeah. 1.87. Okay. I, I, well, my only, my only concern about that is that uh, when you, and please don't take this wrong, but when you have a slush fund like that, it should be designated specifically for capital projects, not for operating projects. Well, it's 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 a tax slush fund. So so the this board would have to come back next year and vote, take a hard vote to go above what it is that we're used to going above, but encroaching on well, that. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. It, it's it's no money at all. I, if you if you just allow me to explain, yeah, yeah. Um, it it really is a financial planning tool. So uh, and it's it's just further complicated because of the state of New Jersey's budget law. As I mentioned, we have several different caps, budget caps that we are required to comply with. Right, right. And so what the board considered and uh, on introduction at its last meeting. Yes simply provides for on paper an amount between the amount to be raised, or actually is it, it's the appropriation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the tax it's tax the okay. it, So it's the, the, the amount to be raised in taxes and the difference between three and a half percent and what is raised. That, that figure then simply is accounted for by the state of New Jersey. So in a subsequent budget cycle, if we found ourselves with some unexpected extraordinary increase, because the board would have authorized that resolution, it allows the county to okay. then be able to okay. raise that, okay. but it's not, it, it, it's nothing more than a journal entry. It, it doesn't represent, it, it doesn't represent one cent. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's what I wanted to know. It's a journal entry, and now I remember the third thing. And this is probably the most sensitive thing. I understand employees, and I understand the need to, to go after them. I was director of human resources, that's all. What 
I don't think how can I say it? Well, I'll come right out and say it. Uh, about 13 years ago, guess what? We stopped requiring, we stopped covering retirees because it probably was costing us almost $10,000 a year to provide insurance to retirees. So if you want to add $10,000 a year, and if somebody lives 15 years, that's actually as an added to that employee's income over their lifetime, $150,000. So I think at the end of the day, what you have to sit down and look at is what is the total cost of your employees? It's not just what they have in the paycheck. And uh, it's, I, I, it's a tough, tough subject. I mean, you know, uh, uh, yeah, well, gee, Bernie Sanders gets elected, maybe we won't even have to worry about that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's, uh, I think when you have, when you look at the cost of an employee, you have to look at the whole thing, Absolutely. including after active employee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get her again. Uh, I don't know if it was saved or what is the actual amount of proposed tax levy. <coughs> The proposed amount to be raised is uh, the amount to be raised is ninety five million five hundred ninety seven thousand thirty one dollars. It's an increase from the twenty nineteen budget of one million seven hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred and eighty nine dollars. Thank you. Are hard copies of draft budget available for the public to look at? Uh, they will be. I, the, Mr. Gettler, what was discussed this evening, what I, I was waiting to hear what the board wished to do. Uh, as we now have direction uh, for the finance officer to begin to prepare the statement, uh, the, the budget on the state form. Uh, there will be uh, there will be a complete presentation uh, given in the beginning of March, which will include all of these draft documents. I'm wondering, is there something available now that we can look at? No. No. Okay. When you're speaking economic development, you've got to be extremely careful because there's out there two proposed bills for the high end economic area. If they are ever adopted, right, Newton off, right, Hampton off, right, off, most of the county off, it'll be a total disaster for us. I've asked Parker Space to pull his sponsorship from it. it oh, it'll never get passed. Well, all Murphy or them have to do is get it through, and it'll totally destroy the county. Everybody should be working on the three rhinos in the 24th district to pull those two bills. It will be a total disaster for Sussex County. This increase in taxes of 1.83, you are forcing a lot more people out of the county. It's got to be cut. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion to bring it back to the board, please? So moved. Second. In favor, we signify at the same time. Aye. Okay, we're done. Okay, a motion for adjournment, please. So moved. Second. In favor, we signify at the same time. Aye. Thank you for coming. Bye.